Hey, it's Ray, your favorite scary movie nerd. Welcome to Film Radar if you are new. Welcome back if you are not. Either way, grab a snack, sit back, and listen to the recap. This is one of my faves. If you need a refresher or are new to the franchise, I got you. Today we are recapping the one and only Final Destination, released in 2000 and directed by James Wong, Stephen Quayle, and David R. Ellis. Very serious matter, the masked killer wreaking havoc is simply death. A full-fledged force going after a group of survivors of a plane explosion. And death is quite sneaky as he operates on a strict set of rules that sends Alex and Pals down a path of gratuitous violence and mystery. Each Final Destination film opening with a tragic incident that leaves several people just barely escaping with their lives. But can they beat death? Stick around to find out and be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a recap with Ray. Our main character Alex is packing for a class trip to Paris in the morning. We see he is the superstitious type and things do already seem kind of strange because his bedside clock is being all flickery to match his flight number and he gets a horrible feeling in his gut when his father tells him he has his whole life ahead of him. It's kind of like Alex expects death itself to come for him already. The next day, his worries do not subside, while at the airport, he finds out his birthday is the same as his departure time. John Denver, who died in a plane crash, is also playing in the bathroom when Alex and his bestie Todd do their buddy business, and the plane itself is looking maltreated. Shit's all broken and old. Alex cannot, for the life of him, shake this awful feeling but he boards the plane. After boarding, he agrees to switch seats with one of the popular girls so she can sit with her friend. He ends up sitting by Todd and Clear, the weird emo girl, sits behind him. The plane begins to take off. Everyone but Alex is happy and ready to go. Some turbulence shakes everyone up and then subsides. After a few minutes of calm, the plane starts swerving and the oxygen masks eventually come out. Alex's literal worst fears are coming true. Suitcases go flying, the plane starts heating up up front, and there's a huge explosion that erupts, sent straight towards Alex and his classmates. As the flames heat up, he is obviously dying. But wait. We then cut back to him being asked by the popular girl to switch seats again. He is fine and not dying, but Alex just had a vision of the plane blowing up. Of course, he sounds like a crazy person trying to explain that the plane is going to explode and is removed from the aircraft. His bestie Todd checks on him, causing him to get off the plane. One of his teachers, Miss Luton, also gets off to check on her students. Claire is a little clairvoyant and believes him and gets off the plane. The jock Carter and his girlfriend Terry get into a fight with Alex over his panic and get kicked off with him. And then Billy gets kicked off because he has bad luck. In this case, it's good luck. Within the next few minutes, the plane explodes just as Alex said it would, and cops want to talk to the group that survived. No evidence found that they tampered with the plane, obviously. A few days later, some people feel grateful to Alex for saving their life. Some saw him as a freak, and Miss Luton is straight up scared of him. That night at home, Alex sees a strike of lightning hit the road outside his house. Showing this bout of horrid coincidences and strange happenings are far from over. At the funeral, he makes plans with Todd to go to a Yankees game after his dad lets them hang out again. Unfortunately, he will not be able to fulfill those plans. That night, death's plan setting back into motion. Alex not noticing the signs that death is coming is unable to save his buddy this time. Todd is back at his own house and he ends up slipping on some toilet water and into his bathtub. The laundry line wraps around his neck. Todd is unable to catch himself and the line gets tighter and tighter. It causes him to suffocate right there in his bathtub. Death cleaning up after itself, making the toilet water go away. Does death have class? Does death clean up after itself? Is death classy? Alex shows up to Todd's right after the accident, making him realize the Todd written on the magazine was a sign for him. Claire is also Why? there and the she says she felt an attraction to him. Ever since the day of the plane crash, she also felt the same thing that day as well. Alex tells her he feels as though Todd is still around. Feeling like they need some guidance on what's really going on, they decide to go see him again. Or at least his body. The mortician, I guess, comes out to greet them, and he knows more than they may be ready to hear. He never states exactly who he is, but he is the candy man after all, so what he says pretty much goes. He's all in death. There are no accidents. This is when we learn the first rule of death. 
Death has a specific design he is following to which clues are given. Alex and Claire's objective now being to cheat Death's plan with his own rules to beat him just like they did when they got off the plane. Easy peasy, right? As the main group that got off the plane is coincidentally gathered in town, Terry is swept away by a speeding bus while she's yelling at everyone to get over their guilt of surviving. That night, Alex is determined and finds a clue. A TV news broadcast displays graphics for the explosion on Flight 180, revealing to Alex that death is actually killing them now in the order they would have died had they stayed on the plane, this being death's design. Realizing Miss Luton is next, he goes to her house to try to save her, but this doesn't work whatsoever. When he shows up, she calls the cops and he gets taken away. Oh, Miss Luton, you're gonna need some help. As as we see, death is very obviously coming for her. She is surrounded by stuff that can kill her in a crazy mishap. She's packing her things up also, just trying to leave the sketchy situation. So everything is jumbled around. We have glass coffee mugs, vodka, hot teapots, and she puts on some John freaking Denver. Asking for it, Luton. Vodka gets on her computer, causing it to explode and sends a shard of glass right into her neck. Bleeding out, she slips on the vodka on the floor and the vodka bottle explodes from the gas fire. Of course, the knives then fall off the counter, one impaling Miss Luton in the chest. When Alex, the nice boy that he is, comes back to help, he makes it 10 times worse, deciding to pull the knife out of her chest, putting his fingerprints all over it. And while he is there, the house blows up due to the alcohol on the gas stove. Alex already looks suspicious to the cops and Miss Luton was terrified of him, so it of course looks like he took great vengeance out on her. Things are getting heated and with the cops on his trail, everyone decides to meet up with Alex because he knows who is next. While riding in the car, Carter feels as if it's not worth it to keep going, but Alex gets a vision of his death right there and then. As Carter goofs around parking his car on the train tracks to await his fate, his seatbelt gets stuck and the train is coming straight for his car. As the other three rush out, he gets worried and changes his mind, but his seatbelt is stuck. It's then Alex ends up risking his own life and saves Carter, pulling him out of the car at the very last second. It's then a scrap of metal is flown Billy's way as the train passes by them, decapitating him instantly. Death's design essentially having skipped Carter after his life was saved and jumping straight to the next person on the list. This is when Alex realizes the second rule of death. If you have intervened with death's plan, death will kill the next person in line. So who's the next person in line now is the question. Answer, it's Alex. Alex is now next in line. In an attempt to stay both safe and sane at this point, Alex hides up in Claire's dad's cabin a couple miles away from her house. The cops are looking for him now to bring him in under protective custody, but Claire is not snitching on his whereabouts. She plans to help him, but while taking a second look at his notes, Alex realizes Claire's seat was in front of his on the airplane, so she's actually next not him. It was in his vision that he switched seats with the popular girl, which put him in front of Claire, but he didn't actually switch seats in real life. Hence, Claire is next and in big trouble. On his way to her place, an electrical fire is brewing, and they both have already come super close to dying before he arrived. Death is full-fledged now. Claire ends up trapped in the car, which is about to explode when Alex gets a brave idea. In an attempt to beat Death and make him skip Claire, Alex grabs a power line and badly electrocutes himself, seemingly dying. This causing death's design to be shifted yet again, skipping clear. We pick back up six months later, and not only did Alex live, but he got on a plane again. We see Claire, Carter, and Alex deporting a plane to Paris. Guess they got that trip after all. As they chill outside a cafe, Alex is paranoid that death may still be coming after him as no one ever saved him. Carter begins gloating he is safe because if anything, Alex would still be next and then him. It's then someone starts playing a John Denver song on their guitar, to which Alex notices with a quickness. Trying not to ignore the signs this time, he stands to leave Claire and Carter and remove himself from the equation altogether. Claire then gets a vision, yelling to Alex she grabs his attention in time to keep him from being swept away by a speeding bus. The bus then runs into a nearby market, causing a pole to fly up and hit a huge sign, sending it flying straight towards Alex. Carter pushing him out the way, saving his life. Death pulling a fast one, the sign then comes swooping back down, sweeping Carter away, killing him. 
Six months passed and death was like, nope, I'm still here. This one definitely creeped me out as a kid. Like, is that random object gonna come alive and kill me? Please don't. And please guys, give this a like if you enjoyed it. Tragedy would need to strike in order for the characters themselves to grow and be more knowledgeable about death to defeat it. It's super messed up. If people knew death itself was coming straight for them in a line of people, that probably caused them to do some pretty strange things. And that's how I describe Alex pretty much in this film. He is lucky though that he had Claire on his side to help him, a great friend to the end. But I have so many questions. Like, are there more rules to this death character? Did Alex live or like die in some freak accident as death obviously intends at some time? And do we see the freaking Candyman again? I honestly don't remember right now, so I am going to actually go watch Final Destination 2 and come back to you guys with a full report. Please comment down below if I missed any of your favorite parts and hit that subscribe button while you're here. And I will talk to you guys in the next recap or review, horror nerds. Peace out.